Okay, I'm <clears throat> assuming this is working. Uh, I often get asked, uh, you know, why after being a, is my audio, I wonder if my audio is even working. Um, let me check my settings and make sure I'm doing this right. Give me some settings, yo. Config, there it is, hold on. Phone, all right, that's good. Okay. So I often get asked, you know, everybody's like, okay, you were a very, very biased short seller for, you know, seven, eight, nine, basically 10 years. Why do you constantly bash, you know, low flow shorts all the time? Um, hey, well, and I actually, you know, I also bash shitty hit piece writers a lot too. Um, but we'll talk about low flow shorts today. So. Basically, the biggest one that is, is stuck in my craw is GTXI. So I see guys, you know, all day, you know, I went long this yesterday. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Um, you know, basically the entire idea I went long yesterday is because I call these, these idiots that think that any low float stock that is up on dubious news, um, or, or, or is just a big percent gain is automatically a short. I mean, this thing's got like a couple million shares. It was trading huge volume early. It holds, holds, holds all day long. And you know, how, what, what, how is this ever a, a short yesterday? And then the, what, what, the reason I'm here today and what drives me absolutely crazy is now it's down 18%, you know, it was as low as 20% down today. And these guys are declaring victory. Victory, this, this, is, this is a fucking win. When you shorted at, at, in the 530s, 550s yesterday, this thing went to like 680 last night. You're down $1.50 a share. And at that point, who knows? I mean, you have no... Let me test this. You have no idea how high that stock is gonna go at fucking seven o'clock at night. I mean, who says this thing, you remember, remember the float and it's day one. Who says this thing doesn't go to seven, eight, 10, 12, okay? We've, you know, you know if you've been in the market at all, especially the last year, I mean, I won't even go, you know, everybody always wants to talk about KBIO and drives. I don't even care about those two, okay? Not every freaking stock is going to KBIO or drives. But we see a couple times a week, these low floaters, they go from 1 to 7 to 10 to 14. I mean, GOYC, all these, all these recent runners that squeeze everybody out. But again, the reason I'm here is this is a victory. To hold this overnight is a victory. That is the that may be the single dumbest trade I have ever seen to short this thing right here, in here, and hold it overnight into a buck plus rip. Um, that's not the angle. Whoops, I'm still trying my camera out. So there, you know, this is the and and, and the reason it it annoys me so much and I go off on Twitter so much is that. You know, guys, guys with small accounts, new traders, they see these types of trades and they see it's down 20% today and they somehow think that this is what, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. This is a, this is a good trade. This is a good short. Well, hell, it's down 20% today and it could go lower. You know, in my opinion, this is the worst fucking risk and reward ever in the in the history of the world. I don't care if GTXI goes to a penny today. I don't care if it goes to a penny tomorrow. Yesterday, holding this thing short overnight is a terrible, terrible, terrible trade. And if anybody tells you different, it's bullshit, okay? And these things happen so much now where you'll have these overly vocal guys on Twitter that get the new guys and get the small guys in trouble because they short these things every day. And if they crack, okay, so if you short GTXI early in the morning and it fails back to four to 350, 
Then you get this barrage of screenshots about the amazing, you know, you know, we knew, we knew this was going to collapse. There's no reason it was up. It's all just chasers. It's all just Kool-Aid drinkers. It's all these other stupid analogies, okay? But then what happens is, the, the strange thing is, when you get a GTXI and it, and it goes all day, I mean, this stock, I mean, what did it pull back? 10 cents a couple times? You get these ones that go all day, all of a sudden, these guys on Twitter just magically knew not to short it. You know, I think of that meme with the guy doing the little magic and the glitter dust going away. You know, but, but this is the exact type one they'll short tomorrow, the next day, the next day. But when they work, they post all the screenshots. But when they don't work, there's no screenshots. So, but again, what drove me nuts, and the reason I thought I'd try out my camera today, is the fact that there literally are guys out there on my moron short Twitter feed, which I should have like a pay-per-view for that thing, um, that are declaring victory in this on an overnight short. Now, if you shorted it this morning at 599, 550, even 530, feel free. Feel free to declare victory. And how, you know, it's freaking day two. The thing's fading, it's cracking back. That's fine. But if you see somebody declaring victory on an overnight short on GTXI, when it went, for all intents and purposes, went to seven overnight, run away, run away, please. Um, all right, I need to test my live streaming, need to test my camera, whoops. And I felt the need to rant. So, I wish you luck, my friends. Please be cautious shorting low floats day one. Um, it is a viable strategy. I've done it many, many times. You can make money doing it. You have to have bulletproof risk to reward though, okay? If you short a low float stock day one of the move and you don't stop out, you're down two bucks a share, you're blown up, you then go back you know, you're, you're, you're done with trading because you ruined your account. And you then say to yourself, well, I just need to be smart. I need to trade like these overly vocal guys on Twitter trade and I'd be all right. That's not the case, okay? You gotta keep, you gotta, you gotta yeah, take in all the factors and know that a lot of these guys are down 50% before they're up 20%. Me personally, that's not the way I trade, okay? Drawdowns are part of trading. You're never, if you think you're going to be right instantly, if you think you're going to enter this long or short and you're instantly in the green and it's always going to work, you got another thing coming as well. But if you're also making trades that offer you 50, 80, 100% of downside for, or, 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 or even higher. I mean, again, what if this thing went to 10 last night? Okay. Um, just know that it, that, that, that it is not that easy. And if you do not stick to your stops when trading these, you will be in a world of hurt, okay? That being said, my philosophy is, look at Twitter. These guys, I don't know why they can't be quiet. They, they telegraph their positions. And if you see a stock that's a couple million float like GTXI, the float's rotating. I mean, this thing traded, I don't know what it traded yesterday, five million shares. If the float's rotating like that, it's holding up, it's holding VWAP. You come back midday, it's holding, holding, holding. Great potential longs, much better setup for new traders or small traders. You know, don't get run over by a train just because you want to be cool in short stocks. So. Have a great day, guys. I have no idea if this is working. I may have just talked to myself for 10 minutes. See you later. How do I stop? Maybe I'm just streaming forever now. Ah, there.